This next question comes from Sarah who asks, what is the age limit on claiming my child as a dependent? My son turned 19 last year and started college in the fall. He's away at college during the school year and home during the break, so can I still claim him as a dependent and for how much longer? Welcome to this episode of Accounting and Tax Tips, smart strategies for small business success with certified public accountant, Tina Mo. That's a very common question, Sarah. So here's the information you need to help you answer that question. To be claimed as your dependent, your child must meet five qualifying tests, and they are relationship, age, residency, support, and lastly, the joint return test. There's a lot to consider when applying these tests, so let's take a look, a little closer look at all of these. To meet the relationship test, a child must be your son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, or a descendant of any of them, such as your grandchild. A dependent may also be your brother, sister, half-brother, half-sister, step-brother or sister, or a descendant of any of them, such as a niece or nephew. Next is the age test. To meet this test, a child must be under the age of 19 at the end of the year or a student under the age of 24 at the end of the year and younger than you or your spouse if filing jointly or permanently and totally disabled at any time during the year, regardless of age. Okay, Sarah, since your son turned 19 last year and he was a student, then he does meet the age test. However, if he had elected not to attend school, he would not have met the age test since he wouldn't be under the age of 19 so he wouldn't meet the qualifying child tests. The key here is that your son was a student and to qualify as a student, your child must be during some part of each of any five calendar months of the year, a full-time student at a school that has a regular teaching staff, course of study, and a regularly enrolled student body at the school. And as a side note, the five calendar months do not have to be consecutive. A school can be an elementary school, junior or senior high school, college, university, or technical or mechanical school. However, an on-the-job training course, correspondence school, or school offering courses only through the internet does not count as school in the application of these tests. The next test is the residency test. And to meet this test, your child must have lived with you for more than half the year. There are exceptions for temporary absences, such as children of divorced or separated parents. Um, your child is also considered to have lived with you during periods of time when one of you or both of you are temporarily absent due to special circumstances such as illness, education, business purposes, vacation, or military service. Next up is the support test. And to meet this test, your child cannot have provided more than half of their own support for the year. If you're not sure if your child provided more than half of his or her support, visit my website and look for the Indie Biz TV tab for a worksheet to help you make this uh, determination. The last test is the joint return test. And to meet this test, your child cannot file a joint return for the year. An exception applies if your child and his or her spouse filed a joint return only to claim a refund of income tax withheld or estimated tax paid. You'll want to make sure your child meets all of these tests in order to be a qualifying child on your tax return. If they don't meet all of these tests, then you should look at the qualifying relative test, as sometimes your dependent may qualify under this alternate set of tests. For more information about both sets of tests and the support worksheet, uh, visit my website at www.actservices-inc.com and check out the IndieBiz TV tax tab. Thank you for watching this episode of Accounting and Tax Tips with Tina Mo. For more great information, visit Tina's website at www.actservices-inc.com. Also browse the other shows found right here at Indie Biz TV Shows.